morning, Reptilians. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, quick note, yes, I did change my background yet again. I decided I didn't like the other one, so I got this bulletin board from Hobby Lobby, and we'll see how that works out. Anyway, carrying on. So this week, we are going to be doing another tank build, but this time it's a little different. I don't think I've ever done a tank build for this animal before. We're going to be redesigning the Corn Snakes tank. He is a two-year-old motley albino. So previously he was in a 20 gallon log and over time we've upgraded him to a 40 gallon breeder and we've got more decorations and everything. But today we're finally gonna put all that together and put him a background in and yeah, we're gonna completely redo his tank. This one is very long overdue, but we are finally getting it done. So first of all, we're gonna start with our 40 gallon breeder. Like I said before, he's been using this one already and that's why there's a little bit of aspen left in the bottom. And I did not realize his heat pad was this small. I wasn't there when they upgraded him from the 20 gallon long to the 40 gallon breeder and I didn't realize how small the heat pad was. So we're gonna be upgrading his heat pad soon. So if you're watching this video because you're gonna be getting a corn snake or any kind of snake soon, make sure that your heat pad is much bigger than this. But we start with this and we just start lining everything up. And as you can see, we're actually using the same background that we used in Zaz's forest setup. We just really liked the background and we really missed the background so we just wanted to use it again. Now I've just flipped the banner and I'm measuring out where I'm gonna cut. This banner is actually gonna go on the inside of the tank just because I feel like it looks better that way and with animals that require a low humidity it's easy to do. So I'm gonna actually cut this into three separate pieces, one for each side and one for the back. And of course I'm also trimming up the top because it is just way too tall. And I do it this way just because it sticks better than trying to fold it in there and it's easier to apply than trying to just fold it in there. And these are just six foot banners that I get printed at Walmart. Even though the measurements of the physical tank is 18 by 18 by 36 and that does equal six foot, the banner itself is still gonna be a little too long because the actual interior dimensions of the tank is smaller than the exterior dimensions of the tank. And now that all that's done, we're going to place them into the tank to see how well they fit. We're going to trim off any excess. You want this panel to lay completely flat on the glass. Also went back and clipped the corners of each individual piece just to account for the silicone because the silicone corners were kind of making it bunch up a little. All right. Yeah. Now I'm just spraying this matte Mod Podge over the entire thing. Not only is it gonna keep it from being so shiny, but it's also gonna create a barrier. So if any kind of grossness gets onto it, we're just gonna wipe it clean. I ended up spraying on three layers of this. It didn't dry as matte as physically painting on the liquid Mod Podge, but it still dried pretty matte and the corn snake doesn't have lights on his tank. So we don't have to worry about glare as much. And also this spray Mod Podge dries almost instantly, which is so much better than having to have it sit in my floor and collect dog hair while I wait for it to dry. Next, I'm just gonna use a small container of the liquid Mod Podge. This one was only a dollar, and that's what we're gonna use as glue to put these panels into the tank. Again, this is where it's very important that the panel is flat against the glass so that the glue will hold. I just like using this as opposed to like normal glue because this one's thicker and it doesn't drip everywhere and make a giant mess. And if you'll notice as you're pressing this on, there's actually a little groove up under the black lip and you can actually kind of push the background up into that and it helps the whole thing stick better. And at this point, I realized that I still managed to need to trim more. So I went back and I trimmed even more to make it fit correctly. I guess I should also explain why there's water bottles in the tank. I just kind of use those to hold everything in place while it's drying because this was a rolled up banner and it kind of tends to try to roll back up. So the water bottles just keep it from doing that. Freeze frame. You notice those crevices at the sides of the tank where light is getting in? You might not have, but I definitely did because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and it was bothering me so bad, but I couldn't put the panel over it because it doesn't really stick to the silicone. So what I did was I just went back over those crevices with black acrylic paint, just the regular kind you can get from anywhere. So those are no longer noticeable in the final product. Of course, I forgot to record me doing that. So I thought I'd just put in that quick note here. And this guy's just gonna hang out in here until his tank airs out. He's got a heat pad and some bedding, so he's good to go. Oh, hi, 
night. It's the next day. I let the tank air out for a full day before I put anything in it. That allows all those fumes to get out. I basically allow it to air out until I can put my head in there and not smell anything. Also, if you notice here and here, I painted those silicone crevices in black and they blend better now. First, we add our substrate. We use a thick layer of aspen bedding because aspen bedding allows for the humidity to stay low for a corn snake. These snakes do prefer a lower humidity. And also our corn snake absolutely loves to burrow. He spends 90% of his time burrowing under the substrate. So our favorite thing to use is that aspen. And then we can start adding in decorations. This is a giant stump that we found at our local river. It has been thoroughly disinfected, even though it does look kind of weird. It has been soaked in bleach and then soaked in water multiple times and then left out to dry for days. The entire disinfecting process of this took literal weeks because it was too big to fit in our oven. And just a quick recap for those that missed the vlog, I get all my driftwood from my local river, but when you get wood from outside sources like that, you run the risk of introducing parasites. So to combat that, you have to sterilize the wood. Normally, I bake it in the oven to get rid of any parasite that may be living in there, but since this piece was so massive, it wouldn't fit in there, and I had to soak it in a bleach water solution. This process takes a while because you have to soak it in the bleach water, then you have to dump it and soak it in just dechlorinated water, and then you have to dump it and you have to do it again. And then you have to let it all dry out in the sun and it takes a minute, but that is what I had to do for this stuff. Next, we're adding his little tree. He's had this since he was small and it's duct taped on the bottom because he definitely got stuck in this one time. But this is his favorite tree to climb on and stuff. So we're just gonna kind of use it to support this giant log so that it won't fall. And also it closes off that side and there's actually a little cave under this stump and behind this tree, if that makes sense, where he can hide. And this is just another stick that we found and disinfected and just something else for him to climb on. And if he's not under a substrate, he can be found in this cork bark tube. If you've seen my previous feeding videos, this is the tube where he always comes out of to eat. And now we just add a whole bunch of plants for more snaky enrichment. And these little fake moss balls came from the Dollar Tree. They're just going to add more green and more texture to the tank. Just something else for him to climb over. And we're all done! We got the tank moved back to the bedroom. We got his heat pad and thermostat and everything hooked back up. And now the only thing left is to add the snake back to his new home. Anyways, guys, that is all I have for you this week. I am so excited about how that tank turned out. Like I said, it is long, long overdue, but in the end, I think it looks really good and it finally looks completed. He finally has a tank that's up to par with the rest of the animals in the house. My old outro is way too long, so we're gonna shorten this up a little bit. So follow me, like, subscribe, bell. Huge thank yous and shout outs to Evel the Prophet, the Southern Gypsy, Three Dogs and Perhaps a Jazz, Bailey's Duncan, Otak, and Baby Galapagos for following me on Instagram, going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. Thank you guys so much. You are beasties. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.